people in my streaming? I never know. Unless Twitch plays it back to me. Plays it back to me. There we go. There's probably some better way to negotiate the start of a Twitch stream. But I haven't figured it out yet. I, I know what I don't want to do is I don't want to <clears throat> sit here with my big stupid head waiting quietly like that. And then when the stream starts or when I decide enough time has elapsed that probably I'm streaming that I'll, I'll start talking then because that'd be really strange and eerie to just see me looking quietly and then suddenly. Hey everybody, I'm Eric, I'm making a game. It's called The God Killer. Uh, actually, I already did this earlier in the day. This is my second session of the day. Um, so I, I did the demo portion, which was me singing a song. It, I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, but first part of this I'm just well, happened earlier in the day. I'm just gonna continue with that. So I'm going back to work on what I was already working on. I had to take a little break to handle a few errands. Take a load to the dump. Eat some lunch. Um, but now I'm back. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, what I set up. What I set up is a way for some pre-processing ta pre tasks to occur right before I hit the play button or I exit the editor. Um, and there's a, a, a couple of things that I wanted to store inside of this game object, the editor game object from the preprocessing. And I created a, a, a component, a level preprocessor component. Uh, and it has code in it that performs the preprocessing tasks. Uh, and then that happens automatically when I hit um, the play button. So it'll do, do, do whatever those tasks are. And then it will store them in properties uh, of the object and those will persist uh, and I can save them and they'll be in the scene so that is what I'm up to and I was about halfway through I basically proved to myself that the way I wanted to do it was going to work now I need to kind of get to the actual pre-processing tasks and storing them inside so I figure I'll refactor a few things um, just to make this code a little more neat and tidy. Also, I want to get out of the habit of always putting private at the beginning because by default it is private. So I can just do this and only use that access modifier for public. Uh, so static, let's do something that just returns the level processor level preprocessor object it seems what does it call it get instance
guess I don't need that there. I can. not good. Um, also, I got to figure out how do I store it's a good object value. Serialized object. Get rid of these hiccups. This person has the exact same problem as I do. That's good.
maybe this object reference value will work. It's not actually ambiguous because the one I picked has a capital letter at the beginning. Okay, what are you expecting? Yep, Unity Engine Object. Okay, what's the complaint? Could just store it as a string. If it's a string, then I could serialize the data. To a string value and store it that way. guy was very thorough in his instructions. I appreciate it. I hit it when I log in and it takes me away from the thing that I wanted to, wanted to be doing. Okay. Cool. So here I should be logged in. All I wanted to do is just plus one this guy. Okay, cool. Awesome. really annoying. So heights is serializable.
Alright, this guy has the same problem as me. <sighs> I think I can do it. It's just it's just going to be ugly. Um So what are my options for this? some different options here. of above put all the results in one serializable object. That might be smart, actually. Uh, and handle as in number one. Number three. from scriptable object and I think I have to instance it in the scene too Maybe it's instancing in scene number four oh that's not my understanding of scriptable object that's just let me just say and probably have to mess around Just based on that discussion I saw just a moment ago, it just seems like, okay, you think you got it because it's derived from a scriptable object, but under some circumstances it just sort of silently fails without an exception or explanation. Thanks, Unity. Um, let's see, what else?
which is kind of going to be the same thing as just serializing, deserializing, because there'll have to be code that shuttles data between these two different formats. Uh, what else? What else? Either number one or number two. No. Same as number two, but saving a file instead of a prop. Pretty. reminding myself non requirement um, viewing in inspector editing or viewing in inspector which reminds me that it's not necessarily a bad thing to do number five Still looking for a better solution. All of these have something wrong with them, to be honest. Um, Curious. Curious if I've got some sort of extra programmatic access through the serialized property to the innards of this depth scan heights because it is a serializable type. Um, so I'll put number six. Use serializable property methods to set values hierarchically if possible so if that one works then that may be the one I use so I'm gonna see if I can actually do that so if I go and look at heights just want to find one
Nah, because these are private variables. They're not going to be exposed that way. I did do something like this earlier, though. I'm going to go over and look. I think it's in a different project. Let's open a file from the other project. Okay, so it operates on gestures. Uh, let me open gestures to see. Let me open gesture. There, Gesture's got some public members. Just curious what I did here to handle the same problem I'm facing. Uh, oh, Gesture is a really terrible search term in this particular source file.
Okay, so now I'm, I'm seeing what I did. And I'm seeing that it wouldn't work very well for the other thing I'm trying to do. So, um, this would require some intermediate um, this would require mapping from data structure to UI that's a lot of work to do that because I'd have to take the entire hierarchical structure of the heights data structure. I'd have to take the same hierarchy that's in there, which has got, you know, dynamically sized arrays and things like that. And I'd have to recreate that as properties inside of the, uh, inside of the component. I'd have to implement an editor interface to it and all kinds of binding. If it, it would take days, probably a couple of days, to do it that way. So that way's out. So let's see. Just, uh, it's so annoying to me because it's so tantalizing. I can see I can see that it's able to to keep something here. Like I don't think it would have put this here if it wasn't possible to store it. So, for example, if I come back to heights and I make it not serializable, there. okay, and then I come back to this level. So, take this out, build everything. Okay, and come back to here. I think this will disappear. Could be wrong. I was exactly right. So what that means to me is that Unity is giving me a hint that it is possible to store that, that value there. Um, and having it be serializable was at least one of its criteria maybe the only criteria and I just haven't discovered the API yet which will allow me to set that value so I'm going to keep looking for a little bit longer keep looking for a way to store a serializable object in property okay. and let's put this back okay I'm gonna go look at the Serializable property reference.
so I have, I have to do one little thing for my peace of mind. Um, there's violent riots going on in Seattle now, and uh, there's a curfew that just got put into effect at, about an hour ago. And riots can spread and they can also give cover to other kinds of criminal activities because like the police are busy dealing with some shit so somebody else can go out and fuck around so I'm gonna gonna see if I can just uh, get a, kind of a quick view of of my camera system outside of my house so I can check it when I hear a little buzz and it says oh somebody's at your front door you know I want to be able to take a look at it real quick uh, I'm put this part of me I, I don't want to log into something that's important to me with the whole world seeing it so I'm going to put you on the white screen just for a little bit And so I can figure out how to log into this. <laughs> they should have on the front page, they should just have a quick way to log in instead of trying to sell me the system. I've been on this this website before and logged in. It's kind of strange. I just don't see any place to log in on it. I suppose I can use my phone, but yeah, I'll just I'll just do it from my phone. I'll do it from my phone. No, I, I, I should try this. I should try this just to see if maybe those extra variables are actually... Nah, it won't work. It won't work. Okay, so just get rid of that. Okay, what was I looking at here? What is a managed reference value? What is that?
One other option. I've been fixated on setting the value at one particular time when leaving the editor. Um, it seems to be that while you're leaving the editor the options for updating properties become more restricted and I had to use this interface in the first place. Suppose the same restrictions aren't there if I simply update those values at a different time. So Number seven. Update values. Without serialization interface at time other than editor exit. that the LP equals depth scan heights. Okay. Um so I'm just curious, does this truly fail? Does this fail? I, I'm assuming it does fail because of something about exiting the editor at that time. Um, maybe it doesn't. So it's set there. Um, okay, I'll hit play again just to get to that break point. I want to see if, before I, I sign this, if for my previous run, if it's already set. That might not tell me enough, though. I mean, this is a good sign, but it might not tell me enough. Um, so let, let me... Um, set the value to something more meaningful. One, two, three, let's do that one too. And this one.
So I'll run it one time. Okay. Bam. Then. Run it again. And let's see if the previous assignment stuck. Nope. Okay, it was worth a shot. But um, also, I'm not done. Because this just proved my theory that I, I couldn't set it in that particular place. Um, And I think that might be, the reason I can't set it, I think might be because I'm trying to set it right when um, the editor is exiting. I could be wrong about that. It's just a theory. So let's just say uh, private. Oh, I gotta get out of the habit of doing private. It's just on validate I don't like a bunch of unnecessary keywords okay I want to say So here it will not be said. Yep. Here it might be. It just got came back to the same point in execution. Okay, it is set here. So this thing about saving when I'm exiting seems to require me to go through the serialization interface, which is cumbersome in order to set the properties. And one of the properties I want to set is a custom serializable type. I say custom meaning it's not built into Unity. Um, and that serialization interface, or serialized property, whatever, um, doesn't seem to work for that. But if I don't do this nifty little trick where I save when the editor exits, I can just store the properties like normal assigns. And that seems to work. So I could solve this problem. with number number seven number seven is this is the one I'm going to do until it doesn't work and then I'll probably do this one and I'll be irritated if I'd have to do that one but I think I think this is what I have to do um, so then the question is now that I can't use that really nice event to perform the saves what do I use instead? I want it to be implicit.
All right, let me simplify my problem here. I'm going to go with number seven. results uh, actually triggers pre-processing in general it's not just storing the results that I have to do I have to do the work the pre-processing work get some results back from it I don't want a fucking spinny thing every five seconds. Uh, preference or nice to have. Implicit. Automatic. I mean, it's really easy for me to just add a little menu item that says preprocess and then. And it'd be real simple, but I would forget to do it, and there'd be some amount of wasted time for me, like going, "Oh, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to run the preprocessor, I forgot to do that," and it would, you know, might be the source of several hours of wasted work, tens of hours maybe. Uh, okay, number one. Um, recurring automatic save. Just like Google Docs does, you know, every, every once in a while, it's going to save your work for you, and it might actually interrupt something you're doing. But so far, the actions haven't taken that long. Um, number two. Game objects have a component that marks scene in need of save. When one transform changes, I forget the name of the event, but there's an event you can put on a game object that fires whenever its its position, rotation, scale changes. Um, but this is still just a refinement of number one because. I would just be saying maybe I don't run the preprocessor unless the scene's been marked dirty. Mark scene. Dirty. Refinement on number one to avoid unneeded preprocessor.
Oh. Okay, now I think I might be onto something. Processing if scene marked dirty. That could be that could be the way. So most of the time, there would be no pre-processing on the on the level load. Most of the time. But if I hit that play button, if I hit that play button and the scene's been marked dirty, then pre processing will happen. It solves some things and it's got some good things about it, but um, an issue is that but this, it's not a, a huge issue, but I'd have to have this code that I only wanted to be in the editor would have to be inside of the, the game as well um, which isn't terrible but it's kind of going away from the organization that I was setting up um, another option if scene is dirty Scene is dirty. Uh, starting play. it with an error. That way I won't miss it. Have to run explicitly. Okay. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good right there. Um, from menu. That would allow me to keep this code separated out to be editor only. Um, let me just do number five before I forget it. Make pre proc um, background task, which means more work. Um, 
in, in you know, making the the functions that handle preprocessing be have yield points inside of them, um, or if I don't want to use the built-in stuff Unity has, I I could you know add in like a kind of like a, a time slicing style of return from the functions where you maybe call it multiple times. Each time you call it, it returns after doing a little bit of work, but not so much that it gives me a spinny while I'm trying to edit and have a Cartman fit over having to wait. Um, that feels like more work. So, so many machinations I have to go through because they don't just have a simple way for me to set this. Yeah. I'm just really fucking annoying. Okay, ways to mark the scene dirty. None of my solutions require the scene to be marked as dirty. So, question. How to detect a dirty scene? Run depth scan periodically. It's pretty fast. I, I mean, it it is enough work that I'm reluctant to just throw it into the mix uh, in in the level load. But to have it peri periodically run inside of the editor wouldn't be that hard. Um, I don't think it's as foolproof as, as option number one, though. I mean, here's here's how fast it is, basically. Um, no, nah, never mind, never mind, never mind. This defeats the original purpose, though, of moving work out of level load. The compare against the checksum would have to itself generate a new checksum, which means iterating over all the game objects to create that checksum, which would be based off of you know their transforms probably, and uh, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be storing a dirty flag. I would be storing a checksum and then later on uh, during the game game's level load I would 
generate a, a new checksum and see if it matched the one that was associated with my last storage of uh, uh, pre-processing results. If they differed, then I would fail in uh, the same way as I said up here, number number four, and force the player to run pre-proc to get a new checksum, but eh, I don't think it's good. Why am I reluctant to do number one? Because I'd have to make sure every single prefab in the in the game had an extra component to it which would mark the scene dirty um, I'm not sure I'm not sure how performant that is I think I could have that code only run in the editor, but or at edit, edit time. But um, there's no way to just remove a component from a game object in the player. You can only disable the code that runs inside not disable it but you know like uh, compile out the code that would run inside of uh, the editor so there's like these empty functions that get called not no not empty functions that get called so there'd be an extra component instance on the prefabs there's probably some kind of baseline overhead to adding a component to uh, an object even if it compiles out with no properties or code it's probably negligible I'm sure unity wouldn't make some giant nonsense of CPU and memory usage for a component it's probably pretty negligible so number one is probably an okay option um, the other way it could bite me is if I forget to add that component, this new one I'd make to something. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't think it is. Okay. God, this is so... It's getting complicated. It shouldn't be this complicated. It would be really ideal if hitting play would just... You know, I, I gotta say, I gotta say one thing, though. There is gonna be a downside to the always doing pre-processing when you exit the editor. That's going to add potentially a lot of time to hit, to starting the level playing inside the editor while I'm doing all these code and test loops. So at some point, particularly when I add in all this stuff that's going to um, analyze for correct camera angles from various vantage points in the level. Um, I won't want that code to run every single time I exit the editor or exit editing mode and go to play mode. I won't. It'll start annoying me. So it's probably a good thing to have it be run explicitly. It's probably a good thing to be able to to not have to run it 
even if you're seen as dirty. Okay, a few things here. I, I don't have to do all the scene dirty stuff in this session which is definitely a, a big sweater thread what I can do is simply add a pre-process menu item have it run pre-process have it store these things without the fucking weird serialized object interface Which actually works pretty well for the custom editor. I, I, I'm being too mean, but uh, um, and then I'll be able to get onto the original thing that I was trying to work on. So let me make sure I've got my intended design kind of in one good place. Okay, I also wrote a bunch of design elsewhere in. Uh, here no is it here was it up above no board loader yeah that's where it was Don't need that. Okay. Nope. It's kind of sad to take this part out, but oh well. Um, when pre pros chosen from menu. do this without uh, adding components to all the objects for checking on dirty scene uh, in fact I won't say that at playtime it needs to exit with an error it can just log a log an error or log a warning if playing a scene that is dirty this stuff because I'm about ready to delete some stuff that kind of halfway worked. I uh, feel a bit sad to lose it entirely.
commit note in case I want to come back to that specific code. Okay, so then then I do the sad thing of deleting this stuff that I had working. I think I, I mean this is this will reduce down to just setting one value in one line so I can delete this function um, so yeah Go to the menu. Add a new menu item. this The other thing is there's probably certain operations that uh, that could run fast enough that they don't need to be explicitly called in that prepros thing. Um, like getting the level bounds could work pretty fast, I'm guessing. So let's see, is this set now? This will be set. 23. Okay. Play it. Ah. Try this again. Just checking the existing value to see if it was set from the last time. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So that's all fine. Um, 
Now, let me see what happens if I save the, the scene and I come back to it. So if I save this scene, then I go to a different scene, close this one. I mean, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be seriously demoralized, but uh, I better, I better make sure, I better make sure. Okay, so this is a different scene, so let's go back to the first one, do a full load from disk. Uh, okay. Then I'll use the breakpoint to check if this is set. It's not. It's not. Ah. Uh. And I'm guessing neither is is the. Yep. Okay. Damn. Damn. Okay. So the basis of the current solution was that I was going to get to store a custom objects if I just stored them at some time other when I was exiting the editor. But I was wrong about it being possible to store custom types. Um, by doing it at a different time. I was wrong about that. Kind of sends me back to the drawing board. Too bad. Okay. I'm sure I'll think of something better though. Uh, dogs barking. I kind of gotta see what's up because of riots and stuff. That's probably a squirrel or some other wildlife. Neighbor's dog was barking and his, his snout was pointed towards my backyard. So I wanted to see if there was like somebody hanging out in our backyard.
It's happened before. Today is a day when bad shit could happen. Bad shit already did happen. More of it may happen. Okay. Stay on this. I gotta stay on this until I crack it. So there's this whole maze of solutions, and I rejected some earlier that I may need to come back to. I'm thinking I'm trying too hard to get data which is not intended to be editable inside of that inspector property. And it's not that I want to use the inspector UI to, to do anything with data. I need to treat it as opaque, more or less, other than just kind of like diagnosing it, or troubleshooting, looking at it. Um, but... I can just serialize and deserialize it myself, which I've done it many times before with other types of code. Um, I could store that either. In the scene. I have another, I have a file already. That's for stuff like this. Let me see how hard it would be to add to it. So I've got this level name, thumbnail name, scene no. It could be extended to have more stuff in it. And But this is sort of a, this is a file that's meant to be hand edited. Whereas the pre-processing is meant to, to update something. Um, so I don't know. I, I think I might, I might have been overthinking this. So I could have is Like one little blob in here and just kind of write everything into it. We'll call this uh, private class. Pre processing results inside of it you put other serializable things ok 
Okay. Then. What? I'm glad I did this commit. I don't want to change. I, I think I can just remember how I did it. Store results. Let's say. Just seems like it's really annoying to have to do this again and again for a private class. Let's be more concise. Serialized object. Forgetting, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting.
kind of tired of looking at an advertisement for this asshole bot. So I'm just going to clear the chat screen. I won't have to look at, want to become famous? There, that is cleared. I hate like advertising for these assholes. So if I leave it on my chat screen in, in some way it might influence somebody else and then all their stupid efforts were worth it I guess uh, okay so I'm just trying to find some existing code that takes a serializable object and and serializes it I know I've got it all over the place which is why I'm not looking it up on the internet right now uh, where else did I save it? Yeah, this is it basically. But can I store it in a string? Probably not. So I'll probably have to use uh, some other formatter. Just curious what options they have. Unity serialization. I know they'll have XML and they'll have JSON. And they'll have binary. And all those have got some issues with it. formatter um, okay. so I kind of wanted to see what is at the formatters level maybe if I go to I format or tell me all the things that use it. Could do oh, let's do JSON. Let's do JSON. Just do JSON. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Uh, I'm gonna. S I'll try one more thing. Because if I could store binary in a property, that would also get me home. Unity store binary data in. Uh, property.
I think that was it. I think that was all the stuff I had to do. Uh, well, this will be interesting to see it all like that. Let, let me see. Let me see if this works. That's there. I don't like that. God damn it. Uh, So annoying to me. Um, I had some unit tests that serialized and deserialized. That would have been in the old project. Yeah. So I know it's passed. So I'm just looking at it to see if I left out something important.
Yeah, so this would have performed ser serializing and deserializing, and it would have checked that the water height was the same. So the difference here is it's 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 binary. Didn't use the JSON. Oh, I also suspect that the JSON formatter is is not actually used in serialization. It's probably not not the same iserializable interface. I think instead what it's doing is uh, using some kind of like reflection style interface to find all the public methods of objects and store those. Um, I can I can learn a little bit about that pretty easy. C sharp JSON util to to JSON. Okay. Yeah, public fields. Oh, it does use the serializer. But the fields have got to be public. Okay, so my options are make fields public, which goes against my earlier patterns. Um, it serializes binary, but then run one extra pass to base64 encode it. Or Save to a file. So if I save to a file, it's like more coding work. It's not like neatly encapsulated in the, in the uh, the scene. So like say I rename a scene file. That might mean I, I lose the reference to the. the pre-processing file. Um, and it's just like a little bit messy to keep the, the files together. That's why I like storing it inside of a property, inside of the game object, just nicely contained. Um, although I'm sure those properties weren't really designed to just store big old blobs inside of them. Um, and these might be kind of large. Like it's maybe a mild abuse of unity to, to use the text fields that way. Not an abuse, but just it's like going outside the intended use cases for it. So it puts me at risk that, you know, at some point in the future, I'll store like 10K inside of a, a string property or something like that. And it'll crash or act weird or throw an error. And then that, yeah. And I have found that Unity, a lot of times, when you use it in a way it wasn't intended to be used, um, it doesn't fail gracefully. So I could just store it in a file, I think. It's not my favorite way to do it. really 
kind of discovered extra work here and it's it's put my uh, mission at risk you could say and I, I can smell um, the food I started cooking in the oven downstairs so I've been doing this a lot lately and I don't want to but I've got a, a bunch of hairy tasks like this that um, I just need to get through. So I'm gonna just put aside that kind of like Mr. Meeseeks type stuff for now. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna try to get to a point in this session where I feel like I've, I've got a legit way to store this data this pre-processing data. That's it. That's all I'm going to try to do in this session. So then at the beginning, I said, okay, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Screw it. I'm going to let myself off the hook. Just like doing that, but, it, you know. Okay, so this session... My mission, which I want to be done with in the next hour, is to get the pre-processing pre data serialized, stored in some persistent form, and deserialized. Um, no, I mean, I'm even going to take out the deserialized. At, at least, I only need to be able to prove to myself that the contents that are there at one deserialized will um, represent the original object faithfully and I may check that in debug code but I'll leave the the, the pre-processing work for maybe tomorrow and hook it all back into uh, this other code I may leave that for later as well Okay, so files it is. Files, it's going to be in a file. Uh, okay. This is basically a good example code for saving to a file. data path
a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I might even take a moment to just read through it. No. properties. Oh, no. There's some. making sure my results yep okay so there's something to store these two ones I can take out they're doing nothing uh, what's that what's that about three vector three is not serializable what what Jesus what are you talking about stupid this is getting real stupid it's like everything almost works that's kind of how I feel everything almost works um, vector 3 is not fucking serializable why would it not be unity vector 3 not serializable why why you fucks what why would you not make like one of your bread and butter types 
be serializable. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do that? That's stupid. I'm gonna make like a serializable vector three. Fuck you. I use my own type. If you want something done right. Okay, so there's the file written. What was the path? Okay, so there's a few problems there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, no problem. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But now I do have to... Now I've got a, a instead of having a directory here, I've got a file, and I'm gonna go find it and delete it. So let's do that, because otherwise I won't be able to create directory there, and probably that would have failed anyways. I think I have to kind of create that by hand. So there. Forgot, I forgot where it said it was storing it. But also, I kind of know that I want it to be stored in this directory, so maybe I should just set the project properties to use this directory. Yeah, let me try that. Got a oven beeping, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go take something out of the oven. I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna solve this in the session. Don't worry, I'm gonna be right back. Yeah. I'll put the wait screen up because that lets people skip past it when it's a video pretty easily.
trying to remember where the setting was where you could say where you wanted uh, your persistent path to go to. Maybe it's in the general settings. Not seeing anything there. Maybe I, they might have changed it. It might not be something that I can set like I was able to before. So let's just see uh, again where it is saving it. This is probably going to fail. Yeah, okay. Application support, default company, GK, prepros, delete you want. I'm guessing this fails. Let me. Application support, default company, GK. Okay, so then we'll say, oh, we'll delete this first. Oh, it's 23 kilobytes. Wow. New folder, pre process. Okay. So let's save that there. Again, 23 kilobytes. I'll try to open it up in here. It might do something interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's storing all the stuff. I mean, I can. I mean, I can double check it later, but basically, I'm. I've got high confidence because I have unit tests I wrote earlier that successfully serialized and deserialized using the the same functions, and I. And basically, have a smoke test here when I see that the file is of a certain size and it's got representation of some of the inner elements uh, inside of it so that should all be good and I think this puts me at the end of my mission to be honest um, yeah so that, that should be fine that should be fine um, Just thinking a little bit about next moves. 
for the next session, which I'll do tomorrow. I get super serious about it tomorrow, too. Uh, and I'll have less distractions tomorrow, less things to interrupt me in the middle of the day. I won't have to go on a dump run. Uh, yeah. So tomorrow, what do I want to do? Oh, I know. I, mean, I just want to write the actual... I want to do this. I want to do the to-do here. And... I'll also have to think through uh, some kind of interface to, to load in the data as well. Like this is all in the editor space, but there'll have to be something on the game side that loads in the, the files. So I may split out this level preprocessor file, refactor it such that the code for serializing and deserializing is like in one place, like level preprocessor file or something like that. And that can be game code as opposed to editor code. This can stay as editor code. Yeah, lots to do tomorrow. My brain's a buzz with the possibilities. And uh, I think I'm gonna call good. I think that's a, a good session. I didn't do the mission I set out to do, but I'm gonna give myself a break on that because the tasks that I'm doing now are they're a little bit hard to discover all the work. So if I were really being strict with the Mr. Meeseeks policy, I would give myself the easiest possible mission at the beginning. It would be like so super easy. And then I would take like a few steps forward and that, that little mission, it would be like possibly 15 minutes long or possibly five hours long. That's, a, that's kind of the nature of this work right now. It's like a, a minefield. Um, sometimes it does go in my favor too like I did something just now that took me like five minutes I had good luck on it which was to serialize the object to uh, you know a binary file and that I was able to copy across code really quick and Normally, if I would estimate how long it would have taken, I would have said, uh, it's probably going to take me an hour on the conservative side. And I was done, you know, 5 to 15 minutes with that. And other things I picked to do took much longer than I thought. So, all right. That's the session. I'm stopping the stream. I'm going to stop the stream right now.